you can come to a seated position, sitting in a chair, sitting on the floor, however is most comfortable for you. But we want to come into a position where you can sit up nice and straight with as much ease and as little effort as possible. So whatever that looks like for you. Generally, I like to sit on something to lift up my hips a little higher than my knees. So I'm going to grab a block. This allows the curve of my lumbar spine to naturally be here because my hips are a little higher than my knees. And with this natural curve and my pelvis in a neutral position, this has a great big effect on the angle and the tension of my neck. So for example, if I'm sitting like this, there's a lot of stress on these muscles and a weakening of these muscles because the back muscles are being elongated. A tensing of the, the sternocleidomastoid and these front side muscles because now they're having to hold my head against gravity in this position. So when I lengthen my spine, you'll see what naturally happens, I'm going to take this, sit up on it to allow my hips to slightly roll forward just a little bit, not a lot, just enough to get my spine in a nice alignment. Now my head can rest comfortably and I'm not fighting against gravity right here, not fighting against gravity like this, but it's resting naturally on the support of my spine. So your pelvis has, and the, the angle of your hips have a great deal to do with how your neck is supported. So we want to keep the natural curves of the spine there. So with that, then gently lift the sternum, which is your breastbone. Gently lift the sternum, and I'm going to turn to the side again so you can see this. And you can take your fist and place it underneath your chin so that you know that you're not tucking the chin too far down or lengthening the chin too far up. You want it neutral, neutral position for your chin. And that's generally about a fist between the chin and the collarbones. So the sternum, breastbone is lifted. The chin is level. And then we draw it back just a little bit. So it's almost like like if you, <laughs> I'm going to give you a funny example. If there was a, a dog right in your face and they, they wanted to come and touch your nose and you are just going to very gently pull back because you don't want to touch their nose, right? So that's the drawing backwards. It lengthens the back of the neck slightly. With this, you want to lengthen the breath and allow it to begin to flow nice and smooth. From here, we'll take your right fist and place it on your forehead. And gently, maybe 20% of your strength, you'll press your forehead into your hand and your hand into your forehead. Notice that the breastbone stays lifted, the chin stays level. And as you gently press, make a mental note to soften the jaw, soften the face, and notice what muscles are being engaged, and just breathe. We don't want to overwork these muscles. We're just trying to say neck muscles, stabilizing neck muscles, we want to wake you up. And then release. Take a deep breath in and out. And then we take our hands behind the head, interlace the fingers, and gently pull up on the back of your skull. As you pull up, you press the back of your head back into your hands. Fold and breathe. Keep the breastbone lifted and the chin level. Close eyes, breathe. Notice where in your throat and your neck are the muscles engaged. We're waking up these deep internal stabilizing muscles in the neck and the throat. But we don't want to overexert them. We just want to wake them up. 
release the head, release the arms, rotate the shoulders, deep breath in, now. And when we do the left arm, make a fist, lift the sternum, chin is level, press the left fist into the forehead and the forehead into your hand. Closing the eyes, deepening the breath. Take your attention to where you feel the sensation of the muscles engage. Try to allow them to be engaged without creating tension. Breath is flowing smooth and soft. And then release. Breath in and out. And then bring your hands behind you and lace the fingers, pull up on your skull and press your head back. Notice I'm not lifting my chin, I'm not tucking my chin. Everything stays in a nice neutral alignment. We're just creating some resistance. And as I do so, soften the face and jaw and take my attention deep into the throat the internal parts of the neck and notice where are the internal stabilizing muscles being engaged here. Release. Okay, the shoulders. Now we'll do the sides. So begin by taking a deep breath in. Again, lift the sternum, chin is neutral, and we'll take your left hand and bring it to the side of your head. So we're not going to create any external movement, but create resistance. So imagine that you're drawing your left ear to your left shoulder, but your hand is preventing it. And as you do so, sternum lifts, chin draws back, close the eyes, and breathe. Notice the muscles, the engagement, without creating tension. Breathing in and out. And then slowly release. Rotate the shoulders. Turn the head from side to side. And then come back to center. We'll do the other side. Sternum lifts, chin is neutral but drawn back. Take the right hand to the side, right side, gently press. As though you're bringing your right ear to your right shoulder, press, but keep everything in this central line so that your spine is assisting you and you're not fighting against gravity. Breathe, notice. What all muscles are engaged in this movement, in this action? Breathe. Be engaged without tension. And then slowly release. Rotate the shoulders. Turn your head from side to side. And each time you do this, you may notice that your ability to turn, your ability to move, slowly, gradually increases. Next, we'll do a turning. So we'll create resistance where you pretend like you're going to turn and look to your left, but your hand is going to be here to stop you. You can either create a fist, or you can use the heel of your hand over both your upper and lower jaw. So take a deep breath in and exhale, turning to the left. But again, there's no actual movement. You're still in one straight line. Breathe and hold. We're only using about 10 to 20, maximum 30% of your strength. And then release. Shoulders, turn your head to the other side. 
right side. Sternum lifts, chin is neutral. Take a deep breath in on the exhalation. Engage. Imagine that you're going to turn your head to the right, but your hand is there to stop you. Take all of your attention into the deep, stabilizing muscles of your neck and throat. We're getting them on board so that these other muscles have an opportunity to release. And slowly release the head and neck. Take your shoulders, turn your head side to side. Ear to shoulder, ear to shoulder. Now the next one, bring your left ear towards your left shoulder like this. And take your left hand up and around. And you're gonna gently place your hand on your head. Now you're not pulling down with your arm. You're not gonna yank your head down but your hand is gonna create resistance and it will gently press your head into your hand. Breathe and hold. Now here, you can do an extra thing. You can stay just like you are right here or you can add a little reach out with your right hand diagonally down. You can point your hand down, your palm face down or you can even rotate your hand up. Do you breathe? And then gently release your right hand if you extended it. Gently release your left hand, bring it all the way down. And then gently bring your chin to your chest. Then slowly roll your head back up to center. Turn your head from side to side. Rotate your shoulders. Maybe the other side. So right ear to right shoulder. And then right hand all the way up and over. I'm not yanking down. I'm just creating a support to allow my head to press into my hand. Again, just 10 to 20 to 30% of my strength. The chest stays lifted, chin stays drawn in. Breathe and hold. And if you like, you can extend your left arm out. And notice it's not way out to the side like this, it's down at an angle. Reaching my fingers as far as I can. And then slowly beginning to open my palm and rotate it. Slowly, slowly release the left hand, then release the right, all the way down, and then slowly allow the head and neck to come down to your chest, and then roll your head up. So take your shoulders a few times. Now, the front side of the throat. So, we want to avoid doing too much, and I personally can't. I'm still recovering from my neck surgery, um, but we don't want to let our head just swing back really far because the transverse processes and the back of the neck will start to crunch together. So to stretch and open up the front side of the throat and the neck, what we do is take your hands on your skin on the skin of your upper chest, right um, along your collarbones and just beneath your collarbones. So I'm gonna take my hands right here and gently pull the skin down. So I'm pulling the skin down, creating a little stretch in the skin and then slowly with my mouth closed, lift the chin. We're gonna keep pulling down. And then you can even do a little bit to the side because these scalings go all the way around the front side of the neck. 
not just the front, but it's all along the sides a little. Connecting with my breath. Feel the skin. Because these muscles are very superficial, meaning they're really on the surface. So just by pulling the skin, we help to stretch these front muscles. Rotate. Turn the head from side to side. And then take the heels of your hands, and we're going to massage the jaw muscles. You start from the top, you feel where your, the top of your jaw muscle begins, and you slowly just pull down with as much pressure as feels good to you. Now you can just go just like this, or sometimes what feels really good to get an extra stretch in the jaw muscle is to take your, the heels of your hands, Press in and down about midway, halfway down, open your jaw. And then go the rest of the way. So press, pull down halfway, open the jaw. And then go the rest of the way. One more time. Press, open. Massage your cheeks, your temples. And then move up from your temples to the sides of your skull, right here, inside your, your hair, this area, back and forth a few times. We get trigger points in this area, in the muscles along here that also contribute to neck tension. So by massaging these areas, you help to release the trigger points that, that help cause neck tension. Okay. And of course you can massage the back of your neck. I like to use small circular movements. We start right at the base of the skull and close into the spine, on either side of the spine. And I Small circular movements out to the sides and then back in and then down along the spine on either side of the spine. Last but not least are some shoulder rolls. So shoulder rolls, I'm going to do one at a time. I'm going to start with my left shoulder. On an inhale, reach my elbow back and up. On an exhale, cross the elbow across the body as much as you can. Back and down. So inhale, back and up. Exhale, down and back. Inhale, back and up. Exhale, down and back. And feel you're stirring up the shoulder blade, the whole shoulder girdle. You're also helping to massage the left side of your heart and your left lung. Now change directions. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, down and forward. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, down and forward. Two more. Inhale, up and back. Exhale, down and forward. Last time. Release. Take both shoulders. Other side, right side, inhale, up and back. Exhale, down and forward. Crossing the body, inhaling up and back, exhaling down and forward. And take your attention, feel the movement of your shoulder blade, the shoulder girdle, massaging the right side of your heart, the right lung. Change directions, inhaling forward and up. Exhale, back and down. Forward and up. Exhale, back and down. Inhale, forward and up. Exhale, back and down. And when you do this, you don't want to keep your spine rigid and straight. You want it uplifted, but you, you can allow some rounding and some arching to move, to allow greater 
movement here, greater facility of opening up the lung, opening up the rib cage, opening up the uh, pectoral muscles, the shoulder girdle, the rhomboids, the shoulder blades, this whole area gets worked up and warmed up like this. So there are quite a few more exercises we can do for shoulder um, movement, mobility, and releasing of tension, but we'll save that for the next video. I hope this was helpful. And if you want to do more, check out the follow-up video.